Yes, we are number one because I'm going to be reacting to about 500 different artists that can say that they were number one, at least in Australia. So you're going to be hearing some songs by Australian artists who never really broke into the international scene and also some songs by international artists that were stupidly popular here in Australia for some reason. In some cases, emphasis on stupid. As you can probably guess, I'm going to be listing through all of these songs that were number one here and give them a rating out of 10, you know? I've definitely tried to make these ratings less about do I like this song and more about do I have any problems with this song being a number one single? But obviously, if there are songs that I genuinely like, they will be rated higher, obviously. Full credit to Brad Taste in Music for this video idea. He did the exact same thing, but for the US Billboard number one songs. Unfortunately, I'm not able to watch that video because God forbid us Australians watch five to ten seconds of a music video that you have the copyright for, you little... Well, I'm gonna go build my own video rating number one songs with Kylie and Nolsey. Kicking off the number one songs in Australia for the 1960s. Give me some money. I'm a bit worried that this will be a bit... Uh, until about 1966 or 67, but anyway, only one way to find out if that's the case. I don't think I've ever actually heard any Bill Haley songs aside from Rock Around the Clock. By the sounds of it, I'm not missing out on much though. Well, the whistling's cringe, but musically, it's enough that I would only be as harsh as a 4 out of 10. Never heard of this guy, but sounds like very standard early rock and roll, so... Yeah, 7 yeah. out of 10. Johnny O'Keefe, Aussie legend. Sounds perfectly fine as well, so... 7 yeah. out of 10. Again? <laughs> I didn't realise this video was going to document every different time that one song goes to number one in different instances. Oh man. Emil, For Emil Ferd, not Ford, according to this uploader. A bit slower, but doesn't necessarily make it too bad. Alright, favourite song so far, 7 out of 10. Beatnik Fly. Ooh, got a little, what is that an organ or a clebulene or something? <laughs> That's kind of cool, you know? 8 out of 10. Hmm, this might be a bit too slow for me, but his voice is good. Just an upper 6. Ah, wonder how many times we'll see this fella in this video. Just a low yeah. seven for this Elvis one. I don't even know what to say about this one. Low seven. Yeah. <laughs> Abandoned ship. No. We gotta. We're gonna give it the pedo tax. It's a two out of ten. Mm. Not really feeling this. 4 out of 10. Sounds old fashioned even for the time, but it sounds chill. I'm feeling nice. This is going to be an 8 out of 10 as well. Yeah, yeah. Not remarkable, but pleasant enough. Oh, you know, 8 out of 10 as well. I don't really know who the bow marks are, but they weren't really breaking new ground. Solid 7. Now, one of the biggest problems that I encountered whilst putting together this video is that whilst I had been recording myself through this microphone and into Audacity, it would just keep disconnecting from the program, which I think is because the USB ports on my computer are getting a bit worn away. So if the USB cable moves a thousandth of an inch, then Audacity thinks that I'm unplugging it or some shit. So if you notice any segments where the lighting and the camera angle changes and my thoughts on the songs probably aren't as long as some of the other parts then then that's why because I was re-recording it yeah the ventures I do know this band so they they are an instrumental band aren't they low seven this Johnny O'Keefe song not as good as the ones before it upper six it's now never by Elvis Presley number one song of 1960 sure I guess it's fine Seven. Yeah. 
the Drifters. Nothing much to say about that one. I think it's fine though. Seven. Are you lonesome tonight? By Elvis again. A bit slow, but a lot of the lesser songs by Elvis are still carried by his really good voice. So this one is at least a seven, I would say. Then we have Burt Campford and his mad hits. Though I think he only had the one hit. Decent jazz instrumental. So seven. Rubber Ball by Bobby V. It's a five maximum. Another Crash Craddock song. No real feelings about that one. Maybe an upper six. Another Elvis song. It's got a bit of a cartoonish feel, but it's cute. And again, his voice is good, so decent seven for that one. I think Elvis's voice really carries this next one, so it's still good. Seven again. Runaway by Del Shannon. Um, that falsetto line, it's a little corny, but catchy. And yeah, I'm feeling an eight on this one, actually. A Scottish soldier. Uh, it just ain't my cup of tea. It's still at least a six, though. Uh, this Ricky Nelson song, it's just sort of pretty standard early 60s fare. Low seven. Yeah, apparently this was the number one song of 1961, and he's like 12, I think. Uh, it's competent enough. Up a six. Michael, it's your birthday today. Cake and ice cream is on its way. But actually, it's a really nice, traditional, folky kind of song. Solid A out of ten. Back to you, old me. I feel like I'm gonna get a bit sick of this guy soon. Up a six for that one. I don't know, what, what can I say about this one? Low seven. Ah, Roy Orbison. Yeah, this one's decent. Sobby, but music's good. Seven out of ten. Goodbye, cruel world. I can't tell if this is pro-war, anti-war, or anti-woman. I don't know. Six. I'd expect that song to go number one. Foreign countries where they don't understand our history, but in Australia itself? Actually, yeah, we were quite a bit racist back in the day. One out of ten. Fuck it. There be drums, so... Are there gonna be more drums? I wanna hear more drums. There's a little bit of drums. Uh... Six. Yeah, to me, this is Elvis's best song. At least out of the ones I know. Eight out of ten. Oh no, it's Kevin Spacey. Yeah, goofy. But fun. Low seven, at least. Mr. Ackerbilk. Yeah, it's a bit of a snoozer. But, that's better than being, my boomerang won't come back, so, six. Definitely sounds like I was enjoying myself there, so, eight out of ten for that. Yeah, it's just an old-fashioned sounding jazz instrumental, six. This other song is, uh, uh, upper six. This is a fun little noisy song. I think Johnny Cash did the version with American. Town names? Yeah, solid seven. Don't know this song or this guy, but sounds good enough. Seven. Obviously, Ray Charles is an undeniable talent. I just think this particular song is a little bit over the top instrumentally and production wise. Just a seven, again. Again, don't know what this is or who this is, and I don't really care to know more. Five out of ten. Yeah, it's old fashioned country song that's. Not terrible. An uh, upper six. Another alright croony song, but a little bit too corny. So, upper six. It's a seven. This one's got a good backbeat to it. The, the melody's a bit not, not as good, though. Just a seven as well. Nat can call. It's smooth. Seven. Fucking yodeling in a 60s pop song. Sh shut the fuck up. Low six. Roy Orbison. Biggest song of the year. Uh, I don't know. Upper six. Herb Alpert. Again, there's not really a lot to say about instrumental jazz, I feel. Just a seven. Oh, this wasn't his best live recording. The song's... Eh. Seven. Mm, return to sender. It's fine, just a seven yeah. as well. 
Yeah, whatever. Seven. Yeah. Ooh, town flirt. A low seven. Yeah. Okay. So this is the original song that Dr. Hook covered. Yeah, solid seven yeah. for this. Hopefully most of the audio wasn't fucked up this time. Most of the audio was, in fact, fucked up. So cool, I get to react to most of this video a second time. Yippee! Ah! This isn't the worst country song I've heard by a country mile. Haha, <laughs> I didn't even mean to make that joke. Probably because it sucks. Anyway, low seven. Cringe. Unadulterated cringe. Four out of ten. Probably the best four season song that I know of. Low eight. Definitely not Royal Business Best, in my opinion. Upper six. Groovy little surf instrumental. And the keyboards sound somewhat lush for the time. Low eight for this one as well. Early Phil Spector pop, sung by a woman about a man, I don't, whatever. High five for that one. This one's good musically, but um, maybe a little culturally insensitive. I don't really know how to answer that question, so just a seven. Yeah. It's my party's okay. Another low seven. Yeah. I'd heard of this song before, uh, but never actually heard it. And it's basically just typical early 60s pop, except it's sung in Japanese. Decent yeah. seven. This is one of the better Johnny O'Keefe songs that I've heard. So just firmly in the seven yeah. category. I definitely thought that this song was a Beach Boys song the first time I heard it. Upper six. I don't know what the hell's the story behind this song, but it sounds fine. Seven out of ten. Now this is a fairly decent and funny comedic song. I feel fairly sentimental to it. Eight out of ten. Another pretty good surf instrumental. Cool, uh, wobbly little guitar line. I dig it, man. Eight out of ten. I really hope that this isn't what the original recording sounded like. If it was, it'd be like a <laughs> one, but assuming that it isn't, the song's a six. Slight improvement on the last Roy Orbison song we heard. Decent seven. Don't know this song or this singer, but it sounds fun enough. Decent seven. Yeah, I'm not really feeling this one. It's an upper five, maybe. This song would probably hit harder for me if I was a Liverpool supporter, but can't deny the absolute passion in it, which is somewhat infectious. So, low eight for me. And then, of course, we get the Beatles. Early Beatles is just whatever to me. Competent, but nothing special. Seven out of ten. Ditto for these two songs. Oh, actually, I saw her standing there. Seventeen, you know what I mean? Uh... uh Six. Just because it's a regurgitated 1950s song, it's just, uh, just a six as well. All My Loving will push back up to seven. Can't Buy Me Love again. Seven. I think this is the song that later became My Girl by The Temptations. It's it's decent. Seven. The same Beatles single from uh, 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Request CP. Okay. And obviously this is an early rock and roll song as well, but it's too infectious for me to give it Less than a second. Yeah. Uh, Psylla Black. Good voice. Not the greatest song. Upper six. Seven. One of the better Beatles songs from their early, early years. Um, so upper seven yeah. for that one. And this is one of Roy Orbison's best songs that I know as well. Strong seven. Yeah. I know of this song. Don't really know it. And also the guitarist in the background looks like fucking Rick Moranis. And he's having the absolute fucking time of his life. The song's fine. Yeah. Seven. She's a mod. Uh, I... Low seven, yeah. I guess. Uh, Daggy Elvis song. Six. This song was muted in the original video. Um, I don't really know how I feel fine, guys. It's probably a yeah. seven, though. Julia Rogers, whoever you are, you also got a good voice, but the song's just a six maximum. Yeah, Downtown's fun. Decent yeah. seven. First Rolling Stones number one. Surprised it took this long, but uh, it's just a low yeah. seven. Seekers, uh, very old-fashioned as well, but 
Great vocal harmonising, so this is a seven yeah. at a minimum. Another fucking Beatles Chuck Berry cover. Low seven, yeah. I guess. Another Beatles song that was muted. Ticket to Ride is absolutely a standout out of their early years. Low eight. Yeah. Oh, Hermits, Hermits. Fucking calm down, girls. It's not the fucking Beatles. It's not even remotely close to the fucking Beatles. Up a six for this one. Not really my tempo, but again, Elvis's voice can really carry a tune like this. So, seven at a minimum. This is an Aussie band, in case you didn't know about them. I don't really know this song of theirs. So, up a six. Yeah, satisfaction. The Devo cover is streets ahead, but this is definitely at least a seven. Another muted Beatles song, but it's just help, so I'm not really missing out on anything. Moderate seven, I guess. Uh, another Aussie singer. With the biggest song of the year, surprisingly, over the Beatles. But yeah, um, solid seven. Yeah. Carnival is over. I like this one a lot more than the the other one that was that came before. And this vocal line just it's just it's superb. I gotta say, eight at a minimum. Another one of the more solid early Beatles singles. It's muted in this video as well. Yeah, eight out of ten. Again, so Nancy Sinatra beats the Beatles. And it's got an undeniable swagger, this song, so 8 out of 10. All right, Nowhere Man is hands down my favorite Beatles song pre-Revolver. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Norwegian Woods. Fine. Sorry, Norwegian Wood. This, the sample of this song started off intriguing and then just bottomed out. Low 6. Yeah, Pay It Black. It's fine. I'm going to give it a bonus point for being quite forward thinking what in terms of being an early another early example of a sitar in a pop rock song 8 out of 10 was, I think this was pre revolver as well and but yeah it doesn't beat nowhere man but strong 8 this as well old blue eyes he's dependable not really my kind of music but obviously good voice so minimum 7 out of 10 wild thing by the trogs I actually quite like this song just a great, raw, distorted, primitive garage rock thing. This is a 9 out of 10 too. I also like that bootleg recording of them arguing in the studio because they can't play a song right. It's a fucking drummer, I shit him. Yeah, this BJ Thomas song is just... It's a 6. Another local, basically, Australia's answer to the Beatles. I'll make you happy, it's, it's decent. Uh, I'm feeling it, you know, 8 out of 10. I'm not huge on Eleanor Rigby, to be honest, but it's at least a seven. Yeah. I don't know what this is, and I don't care to know. Five out of ten. I mean, singing your vocal through a megaphone is interesting, especially for mid-60s, but uh, song's corny, and not in the best way. Up a six. Don't really know this particular Easy Beat song, but it's got a good chunky rhythm. This one's an eight. This is definitely better than the Herman Hermit song from earlier. So, yeah. seven. Yeah, good vibrations. I don't really care for the song all that much, but just for being a breath of fresh air in the pop scene. Eight out of ten. Yeah, this Norman Rose song, definitely not as good as the one from earlier. It's a low six. This is a very famous Easy Beat song. Their best known one. Overplayed, but... The song is obviously decent at its core. Seven. Yeah. yeah, Tom Jones, like Frank Sinatra, solid voice. The music never really cut it for me beyond just a, you know, okay level. Seven. Yeah, yeah whatever. Seven. Yeah. So I can't believe this is a fucking number one song. Mainly because it's not all that good. Low six. Definitely not on the level of Carnival is over, but again, the harmonies are great, and that prevents me from pointing at anything lower than a yeah. seven. Okay, Penny Lane, decent. Story feels forever, mega decent. It's also a double A side, so both of them count in the single because of how great Story feels forever is. This one gets a ten out of ten. What can I say? Magical Mystery Tour era Beatles is the best era of Beatles. Definitely not on the level of Strangers in the Night. Bit disappointing for me. Six. Not Petula Clark's best either, that's for sure. Six out of ten. Decent, soulful, mildly psychedelic rock song. 
Just a seven. Not all that big on all you need is love, to be honest. Baby, you're a rich man's a good one. So it rounds out to a seven. This looks goofy as hell, but it's got an infectious mood. It's at least a seven. Yeah, this Petula Clark song's fine as well, so seven. I don't know who Vicky Carr is, but she's got a great voice. However, the song itself is a tad rubbish. Six out of ten. Of course, the Beatles were finally making the best music of their career, and yet the most popular song in Australia for 1967 was by Engelbert Hunk of Shit. <laughs> now nah, the song's fine, it's a six. Go directly to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200, you fucking sellouts. Four out of ten. Again, not big on Hello Goodbye, Iron Loris is good. Seven. Yeah, John Farnham, this is... Nah, this is a bit too cornball for me. Up a six. This feels like a pop songwriter trying to make a psychedelic song and not really succeeding. But it's grown a little bit on me since I first reacted to it, so... Seven. This is unique, I'll certainly give it that. It's just a seven, though. I don't know, this is... This is seven, I guess? Really not feeling this song. It's a five. Uh, yeah, this is a fun little Irish folk song, which I wouldn't um, go out of my way to listen to, but it's a solid seven. Wasn't expecting to hear a Herb Alpert song with a vocal on it, but here you go. It's a seven, low seven. Oh uh, yeah, so I found out that uh, Juice Newton was not the original singer of Angel of the Morning. Great voice on this one as well. Seven out of ten. And yeah, this Irish Rover song's pretty fun too. So, strong seven. Oh, boo-hoo, someone left the cake out in the rain. Shut the fuck up. What the fuck are you even singing about? Three out of ten with this melodramatic bullshit. Still not sure why Mama Cass is credited separately from the Mamas and the Papas, but... Song's good. Seven. Uh, it's a Tom Jones song, so you know exactly what you're going to get. Just seven. Hadn't heard this song before I did this reaction. It's got quirkiness to it, that's for sure. Decent seven. Yeah. Hey Jude, don't really care. Revolution's good. Seven Whatever. again, yeah, 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 yeah. This is especially phenomenal as far as number one songs go. Eight out of ten, but Eric Clapton's a little bitch. I've only really heard the version of Eloise by The Damned. Uh, the, the original version? Sounds decent enough. Yeah. Seven. Looks like a skit from the fucking goodies, and sounds like something that would have been in the show as well. Five out of ten. Um, yeah, if, if you're only familiar with Disco Bee Gees, then in the 60s they were making some interesting, more psychedelic pop. This is a low 8 for me. Yeah, 7 yeah. for the Beatles again, I guess. Not really feeling this Peter Sarstedt song. Just a 6. This is a somewhat iconic Australian song. Gets Goes through some wacky psychedelic shit later on. It's like a 7 minute song and everything. Yeah, I'm giving it a 9. Seven for the Beatles. I wasn't expecting to be vibing with this song as much as I have been when I've been listening to it. Eight out of ten. Battle of John Yoko, yeah. Beatles seven. Ha, just kidding, it's an eight out of ten. Fuck you. I don't know why I said fuck you, but there you go. Definitely really not in the mood for this Elvis song. Six for Elvis that, that time. Don't particularly care for the Rolling Stones from 1969 onwards, but, you know, the song's still a solid seven. Yeah, I don't really know this Russell Morris song, but it sounds like he was trying to follow up on the popularity of the real thing with another psychedelic kind of song. Just because I don't really know it as well, I can only give it a seven. Yeah, yeah whoever the fuck this Rosty Willy guy is, that's a six. Another seven yeah. for the Beatles. I consider this a low point for Roy Orbison. This sounds like it would have come out in 1961 or something like that. Five out of ten. And I rate this one at the start of the 1970s segment, so yeah. I was actually pleasantly surprised with how the quality of songs for 1960 number ones turned out. There were actually quite a few fun, enjoyable songs amongst the early half of the 60s. And then, yeah, once you got into the psychedelic age, Things really took off. I'm a long way from being the biggest Beatles fan out there, but you know, surely you can't really deny that they didn't deserve at least a few of those number one singles. Now we go to the next decade. 
which was the first decade that I reacted to for this video. And when I started off, I thought that I'd be able to get away with filming myself within my MacBook rather than on my phone, but it turns out that the screen recording and the video recording don't go together very well on this old ass MacBook. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. So the first five minutes of this segment are a bit dicey, but I thought that the actual reactions themselves were amusing enough that I can't be bothered to re-react to that segment. So you're just gonna have to fucking suck it up. I said young man, are you listening to me? Um Shit, head and pause, hold on. Okay. Yeah, suspicious minds, Elvis. Don't really care for Elvis in general, but that one, that one's fine. Uh, six or seven, I'd give it a... You know what, seven. Yeah, yeah I'll give it a seven, it's fine. Good old Johnny Farnham, Aussie legend. I don't know, I'll just give that a six. Ooh, Venus, shocking blue. Still got the, the psychedelia on the charts. Give that a seven, I guess. Uh, Led Zeppelin. Overrated to be honest, but that, I mean that song's fine. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just stick it in seven. Yeah. Let it be, Beatles. Uh, number one for six weeks, so yeah, pretty popular, obviously. Uh, slightly overrated, at least that particular song is. Um, yeah, I I'm gonna give it a six actually. Yeah. Spirit in the sky. Ooh, this is a pretty decent one. You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it an eight. It's got a really cool fuzz guitar tone and just. Also, it's really funny that the guy who wrote it singing about Jesus when he's Jewish. They don't really have a friend in Jesus, is what you would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know this one, but uh, I don't think I really want to know it. We'll give it a five. Oh, I don't know this Beach Boys song. It doesn't even sound like the Beach Boys. Uh, six. Ah, uh, Credence. Yeah. Solid 7. Can't hate on Creedence Clearwater Revival too much, even though they're not really my cup of tea, because they, they were good at what they did. John Fogarty especially, because he was responsible for like 95% of all of the music. The other guys just kind of played the parts that he wrote, you know? And you got, okay, Simon and Garfunkel. I've never actually heard this particular one. Sounds decent though. 7. In the summertime. Not bad, only one week at number 1. Give that a seven yeah. too. It's a it's a goofy song, but it's wait wait whoa wait. Wait, <laughs> wait so so the original in the summertime was pushed off of number one by the Aussie band that covered in the summertime. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I'd probably just listen to the original if I had to choose between the two. Just because the original's better, I'm gonna give that one a six. Because it sounds it sounds pretty much identical just from those clips. Okay, we've got Carpenters. I'm sort of between six or seven for this one, because it's, it's fine. I'm not really... Yeah, I'm not big into it, but... It's it's easy listening in, in more ways than one. Give it a... Yeah, seven. Yeah. Seven, it's fine. More Credence. Give them an... Yeah, give them another seven. Maybe even bump it to an eight, because within the... The continuum of popular music, Credence are definitely one of the better bands. What it Miguel Rios? Uh, yeah, it just sounds like some yeah, easy listening in a more negative sense. Yeah, don't know it, but yeah, just give it a six. Oh, the Partridge Family <laughs> sounds about four or five years too late. Yeah, I'm gonna be harsh. Give it a five out of ten. Yeah. George Harrison, is that, what is this, a music video with Weird Al and Patton Oswalt? I mean, obviously it wasn't great back then, but yeah, okay. Um, just because it was very heavily plagiarized as came out later, I'm going to give it a six. It's not a bad song, though. More mixtures. Yeah, you, so any international viewers, you probably don't really know this band that, that well. And even if you're Aussie, you might not know them very well either, because they were very much a early 70s I was going to say phenomenon, but they, they weren't really big enough to be a phenomenon, I don't think. Wait, 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 let me go. I'm listening to that clip again, hold on. Uh, yeah, that just sounds like in the summertime with very minor changes. So, 6 out of 10. Dawn. Uh, yeah, that's another 6 out of 10. Rose Garden. 6 out of 10. Janice. 
she always sounded like she was already in her 40s and been smoking for like at least 10 years. Very gravelly voice. Um, I don't really know. I'm not very familiar with me and Bobby McGee. If I just have another quick listen. Just just... Yeah, sounds fine. We'll give it a seven. Good old Tom Jones sing us the song, Tom. We'll give it a. We'll give that a seven yeah. too. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure he had far better songs than this one. Possibly far better songs that'll be coming up in these Aussie number one videos. So I'm gonna give that one a six. Who? Who is this? Chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap. I know the song. Uh, yeah. I probably wouldn't be seeking out that song in my spare time. Give that a five. Whatever. Don't know this Holly song. Obviously, I know the Hollies, but uh, six. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's Eagle Rock. It's not like a. I I don't really get a lot of emotions out of it, but it's it is a very dependable song again as far as popular songs go. So it's a strong seven. Yeah. And yeah, it was a massive hit in Australia. What the fuck? Oh. And yes, there was also a song called Daddy Cool that was popular around then. And I believe Daddy Cool the band also covered Daddy Cool the song. Because they kind of had to, didn't they? That's a... Uh, oh. I'm not feeling that sample. I'm going to give that a 4 out of 10. Alright. Olivia Newton-John comes through. Yep. Uh, 6 out of 10. Now we got Rod Stewart. So, we'll give that a 7. It's fine. Oh uh, yeah, imagine. A little bit overrated, overplayed, especially. Uh, it just feels a bit too stripped back for me. I'm going to give it a six. Oh, David Cassidy. That's a five out of ten. <laughs> Penny Hill. <laughs> um, <laughs> give that a yeah, six. Yeah. Such a weird vocal. Six for a brand new key. American Pie. Uh, it's good. Goes for way too long. I'll just give it a six. It's just yeah. Six is okay, but it's 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 a bit of a plain song for me. We got Harry Nilsson. I didn't realize he had an I didn't think he had any number ones really. Uh that song sounds alright, I'll give it a seven. What the fuck? Really? Scottish Bagpipes playing Amazing Grace for five weeks! Five weeks! Whatever. Five out of ten. Alright. Sounds smooth. Yeah. Give it a seven. Uh, six out of ten. Puppy love. Fuck, how old was Donny Osmond back then? Yeah, I guess he did start out young, didn't he? But Jesus. Uh, so five out of ten. And then. Uh, uh, well, five again. Uh oh! None. Alert! Uh, of course, we all know who he is, but that's a pretty good song. I gotta admit it. You know, yeah, fuck it. Eight out of ten. Who's this? Okay, I know the song. It's, it's, it's fine. Six out of ten. <laughs> that's not something I was expecting. I'll give it a seven, mainly out of the pioneering aspects of it, but yeah, there's not. it's not very groundbreaking piece musically. Okay, Jackson. Uh, give that a 6 out of 10. I don't know who this is. Looks like Roger Waters. I don't know. Fucking 6 again. 7. More Carpenters. Uh, Karen Carpenter, very talented, but, you know, the music was very... Low, a bit lowest common denominator as far as 70s pop goes. Let's give that a 6. Okay, more Dawn. That's also a 6 for me. Judd Strunk? What a name. Uh, 6. Uh, uh 5. Ah. Not, not, I thought that was alright. I'll give that a 7. Okay, pretty well known internationally, I think, as an Aussie singer. Uh, that song is a song. Yeah, give it a six. Shirley Bassey, very talented. I'm probably going more off of talent than the song itself for this rating. Uh, yeah. Seven, seven out of ten. 
Susie Quattro. Yeah. I think she she might have been a lot more popular in Australia than she was in the UK or the US. Not the worst hard rock song of the era. Uh, just just a six for me. I uh, don't really know who this is. And uh, comp sounds confident, so we'll give it a six. Oh, we got the Rolling Stones. For surprisingly, the first time of the entire decade. More Helen Reddy. Yeah, I just don't think that her songs were all that good, at least from what I've heard. So that one will just get it. Well, I'll be a little bit generous, give it a six. We got more Susie Quattro. God. It's like Gary Glitter, but worse. Worse musically, not worse as a person. <laughs> I'm giving that a five. Whatever. Ringo Starr. All I got is a photograph. Uh, six. Oh, Bowie. That was from Pinups, I think. His covers, his covers album. Six. Oh, Handy Jack. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's another thing that you're probably very confused by if you're not Australian. That was just like a theme song for it. Uh, I can't be bothered to explain. It's just it's probably not worth explaining. Fuck. Whatever. My Kukachu. Oof. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, give that a five Whatever. as well. I actually decided to give this song here a full listen because I was tempted to bump it down even further to a four or possibly even a three. But it turns out the song's actually pretty good, you know? Just the vocal line is a little bit cringe, which would be why I didn't get a very good first impression just from that five second clip. However, yeah, musically, it's pretty good. And the guitars especially, they've got a nice growl to them, for sure. Yes, I'm going to bump this one up to just a 7 yeah. rather than 8, because again, the vocal line is a bit... Yeah, I mean... Kukachu! It's also... Glitter. Stardust. Were you even fucking trying? Seasons in the Sun, pretty well known, worldwide. 6. More fucking Susie Quattro, Jesus Christ. I'll give it a six. Okay. Billy, don't be a hero. Six out of ten for this one. Evie. Not bad, I'll give it a yeah. seven. I think, I think it's been a while since we've given a seven, to be honest. Oh, there's there's the other Paper Lay song, the one that international viewers are more likely to know. I mean, it's, it's like typical soft rock, whatever, but it doesn't sound bad. I'll Give that a yeah. 7 too, why not? More Olivia. Uh, 6. <laughs> of course. Um, it's goofy as hell, but almost impossible to dislike because of it. Yeah. 7 out of 10. Uh, Daryl Braithwaite, here we go. Another Aussie icon. He wasn't really making very groundbreaking music though, let's be real. That's a 6 out of 10. Uh, I think he was Aussie as well. I don't really know him though. Six out of ten. William Shakespeare. Five Whatever. out of ten. More Carpenters. Six. Ah, uh, another cult Aussie band here. Seven out of ten for that one too. I don't know who this is or what this song is. Uh, six. Uh huh. This was Daryl Braithwaite's band. Uh, six. Oh, Pilot. They had another song that was big. Okay. Uh, six out of ten for that one, too. Freddy Fender. Freddy Fazbear. <laughs> Good God. Uh, six. Bay City Rollers. Uh, six. Oh, this one. This was not bad. Six weeks at number one. Seven out of ten for me. Okay. Uh, six again. Okay, now we've got ABBA. There's going to be like ten of these coming up in this video alone. Uh, I do, I do, I do. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a six. It's fine. There was better ABBA songs. Yeah, this one's probably one of the better ones. We'll put it in seven. Yeah. Fuck! Three in a row! <laughs> uh, but I, know, I, I also know what's coming. There's going to be another ABBA song. And it, one that was 
at the top for a very long time. So we'll, we'll see. I don't remember how long, but we'll find out. Uh, six, I don't really know this one as well. <laughs> this was kind of amusing. Seven, I guess. Okay. God, that chorus is dreadful. Let's we'll give it a five. Oh, yeah. You know, a bit overrated. But, you know, they're phenomenal musicians. I've just heard it 500,000 times, so it's hard to get a lot of... It's hard to get any real feeling out of it in that case. But I'd give yeah. it a 7, but I don't I don't go out of my way to listen to it. There it is, Fernando, 14 weeks. Uh, and it's not their best song either. So, 6 out of 10 for that one. Oh, God. Out of the Sherpa songs that I know, there's probably the worst one as well. Fucking great cricket cricket metaphors, you guys. Outstanding songwriting. Five out of ten. This song's fine. Give it a seven. Uh, this one gets a six. Definitely better Elton John songs out there. Eight weeks. This one's fine. Seven out of ten. Okay, Brian Ferry. This song's just a bit too corny for me. I'm going to get a six. Money, Money, Money's feels like one of their more musically creative songs. At least they're doing something unique compared to the standard disco, whatever pop style of pop they're doing. Seven out of ten. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's probably a lot of Chicago songs that I could hear and just be like, Ugh. but yeah, you know what? I'll give it a yeah. seven because it's, it's fine. It's just fine. Uh huh. I do know this. I. Uh, six, bit corny. What the hell? That song sounds about five years too late as well. Uh, five out of ten. Sounds a bit boring for me. David Soul. It was the guy from Starsky and Hutch who passed away not long ago, I think. Five. I'll give that a five as well. Uh, we've got show tunes. Cool. Seven weeks at number one. Good God. Uh... Six. I like going, you know, going to watch stage musicals in person, but I wouldn't listen to show tunes at home. It's not really my thing. Little River Band, uh, seven. Why not? Not bad. This song's kind of stupid, but it's fine again. We'll give that a seven too. Another Aussie icon here. Seven, because that song's fine as well. Yeah, these are all sevens. Because they're fine. Kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Shout out Giorgio Moroda. I'm not, like, huge on this song, but, you know, Pioneer, of course. So, I'd give it a 7.5 out I could, if I could, but we'll just go 7 for that one. And then we got the less talented Gib brother. Well, I feel like I'm being harsh because he died when he's, like, 30 or something. Um, all right, that song's a 6. Let's do it. Don't really know this song. Give it a six. Sounds fine enough. Yeah. Seven, why not? Bonnie Tyler. Uh, six. The babies. This one's fine as well. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> Staying alive. You know, at its core, not a bad song. But maybe just because it's a little overplayed, I think we're going to bump it down to a six. Yeah. A little more different. Uh, so, yeah. seven. Can't stand the rain. Solid yeah. seven. Only one week at number one. Then we got, yep, also number one. Okay, Baker Street. Yeah. yeah. Seven. Uh, all right. Look at this one, a six, because it's fine, but it's just slightly annoying. Huh, Rivers of Babylon. Uh, this one's fine as well, in a better way. Yeah. Seven. Dragon. So they're a New Zealand band. Uh, six. Um... Probably a bit too corny for me. We'll give it a six. Yeah, sounds smooth. Give it yeah. a seven. I mean, I know the songs. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Uh, would give seven and a half if I could, so seven. Yeah. Oh. Again, a little bit too corny. Six out of ten. This is corny in a better way. So seven. Yeah. Yeah, seven. Again, corny, but... Still somewhat enjoyable. Okay, we've got a cricket song. Six. Yep, yeah, solid song musically. I'll give it a seven yeah. too. 
Another seven. Yeah, it's, it's pushing to an eight, but yeah. Yeah, this one's fine. All right. Seven. Yeah, yeah just these are just sevens. Yeah. Like, out of what's probably going to be coming later on when I get to 80s and 90s number ones and maybe 2000s, um, these are probably sevens compared to all number ones in Australia. So, yeah, they're fine. Oh, yeah. So, seven, yeah. seven as well. Uh, yeah, this one's not as good as their other one. I'll give it a six. Okay, now we've got a, now we've got a footy song. Six. Yeah, my Sharona. So we'll just give it a seven because yeah. a bit o a bit overplayed as well. But <laughs> this one isn't quite as overplayed. Um, yeah, it's fun. So that's good. That's a yeah. seven too. Don't like Mondays. Yeah. Yeah. That's a all right, seven as well. I might go back and bump some of these up to an eight or some of them down. I don't know. This one's certainly unique, but again, overplayed. So just a seven. So that was the 70s. And if I could describe the decade's worth of number one songs in one word, it would probably be consistency. Not too many horrifyingly bad songs, but also no nines or tens. And now we move into the 1980s, where everything started getting big. Big hair, big choruses, and big fuck-off reverberating snare drums. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, let's see how this turns out. Another solid yeah. seven, just, it's, there's not a lot to that song really, is there? It's just basic by Michael Jackson standards. But it's fine, it's fine though. We got KC and the Sunshine Band. That's a six. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody would be better than Crazy Little Thing Called Love in my books, but it's fine, it's a seven yeah. as well. Um, this is Split Ends, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, this, this is a good one. I'm gonna give this an eight. It's, it's, it's got a cool new wave, slightly electronic sound that I, I certainly quite like now. Eight weeks of number one. That's yeah. We we get we, the taste is still there. Aussies, good job, Aussies. Okay, Burnett. Six out of ten. Hi. All right. Another seven. It's fun. It's not much. Not much more than that. Just a little bit of fun. I uh, can't stop the music. Uh, Six. All right, back up to yeah. seven. This is fine. <laughs> Moscow. Good old Moscow for six weeks, number one. Seven. Yeah. Then we got it. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah. a seven. It's fine. Nothing really special to me, but... Uh, yeah, fuck it. Give it a five yeah. out of ten. I don't really want to hear that again. Yeah. Phenomenal voice, not very good songs, I would say. So just a six for that one. Oh dear God, number one for eight weeks. I mean, it's it's kind of a comedy single, so you know, music kind of plays second fiddle to the you know the lyrical content and that sort of thing. That's a mama. You that a five as so. well. Yeah, not John Lennon's best. So that's, I'm giving that a six. And we got famous country singer from this country. Yeah. Corny, but again, I would never get up to turn it off, so 7 yeah. out of 10 for me. Oh, here we fucking go. That's a fucking 10 out of 10. First 10 out of 10. Possibly only 10 out of 10 of this video. Fucking love that song. I made a video about the swingers and their short existence and very underrated musical catalog go and check that out sadly only one hit wonders basically but well, they were the definition of one hit oh ant music i like a good bit of that in the ants um yeah we'll give them we'll give ant music an eight we're kicking off the decade strong but it could get downhill from here that's what i'm worried about oh god from a me to a 
like, oh, this one's just so sickly sweet. I could probably ignore it if it was on the radio, but I'm going to give it a five just from that clip. Not in the mood for it. Yeah. Corny, bit corny, but give it a seven. It's fine. Ugh. Six. Oh, this is yeah. seven a bit. It's eh. Uh, Three out of ten. Yeah, it's just a medley of... I think they're all 60s and 70s songs as well. I don't know what the fuck people would... Ugh, four weeks? What was going on in, 19, in July 1981? A whole lot of nothing, apparently. Oh, TiVo Live. I think... I guess this was an EP. <laughs> well, it's Devo. Alright, gets a nine. Fuck yeah. I saw what I think is now their final Australian live show. They still got it, even though they're on their 70s. <laughs> they they can put on a great show. If they're still playing a couple more shows, then go check them out while you still can. Oh yeah, Rick Springfield. I think this was a pretty popular song in the US too, I think. It's, it's a bit overplayed. Probably for that, I'm going to give it a six. Oh, this fucking guy again. Oh god! If the other song hadn't already been on, I'd probably give this just a six, but... I'm kind of already sick of seeing him, so... Five out of ten. Now, don't come back. This also sounds about five years too late. Six out of ten. Not the worst, but not the best either. Uh, god, was this the year of the fucking 1970s throwbacks? Six out of ten for Billy. Okay, start me up. Eh, it's fine. Give it a seven. It's fine. Yeah. Not her best error. Just a six because it could be a lot worse, you know. Oh, yeah. This is fun. I mean, I've heard it a billion times, but it's, it's, it's definitely enjoyable at a bare minimum level. So, solid seven for that one. Borderline 8, honestly. Lindsay Buckingham? I didn't know he had solo hits. That sounded... Okay, I guess. Yeah. 6 out of 10. Oh, 10 in love. Yeah, another strong yeah. 7. Strong yeah. 7 as well. Yeah. Uh, mild 6. Yeah. This just sounds a bit too try-hard for me, I think. I think that's the problem, maybe. Uh, so six, maybe six and a half. This one's fun. So definitely, I'd definitely bump this one up to yeah. seven. Oh. Yeah, five out of ten. Oh, banger. Solid eight out of ten for sure. Uh, not as big on this Adamant song. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a six. Or six. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna push this down to six because it's about cheating, as far as I as far as I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, seven. Uh, corny as fuck, but yeah, again, tolerable. So seven. Uh, we got another seven here. Come on, Eileen. Yeah. I kind of feel the same about all of these. I just... You know, I just don't really care about them, but they're fine. So, you know, seven yeah. or six, I don't know. Same for this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Okay, pushing this back down to six. Yeah, got to respect it. So, seven. Uh, another iconic Aussie song that probably hasn't spread all that far internationally. Pretty serious song. It's fine. So, another just, yeah, just seven. Uh, um, six, because it's, it's corny and it's overplayed. It's, there's probably going to be a lot worse songs to come again. Yeah. Just a six for this one as well. Uh, just a mild seven on this one. Reckless.
No prizes for guessing where this band came from. If you've heard any of the other songs, this song probably would have come as a surprise back in the day. Yeah, it's an old one, kind of compared to their early work, but it's fine, it's the same. Yeah. Tango. Yeah. Yeah, just six, because it's a little too corny for me as well. Oh, Arn's in the stream. Uh, six. Yeah, light seven on that one. Solid seven on this one. It's pretty good. Uh... Mild to m medium yeah. seven. Mild seven in this one. Oh, this is this is like a lower eight. Solid. <laughs> I mean, just because I respect the fuck out of Weird Al, I'm gonna give this an eight too. Yeah. Mild seven on this one. Uh, a, a, an upper six on this one. Yeah. All right. Solid seven for Wham. For this song at least. Yeah. I, I'm not all in on Prince, at least yet. But you know, I, I respect his work certainly. Certainly in the realms of pop music, he was. He was a vanguard. This is a solid yeah. seven for sure. Six. Seven. Yep, yeah, seven. Yeah. Can't believe that this is apparently Stevie Wonder's only number one song, though, in this country. Yeah, wild. Uh, six. Five. Four. Okay, odd one, but it's a seven. Seven. Ugh. Three. Five. <laughs> Not because I hate charity, just because the songs associated with these charitable things, they just suck ass, alright? Seven. It's Madonna one. And seven, I guess. Five. Terrible ballad. Oh. Light six. Slightly less terrible ballad. Seven. Seven. Six, fucking daggy song. Five, seven, five. Not huge into Midnight Oil. I don't really know this particular release, but yeah. Six, light seven, five, six. Uh, it's not big on this one either, but I gotta bump this one up to seven. <laughs> uh. Fuck it, eight, because the young ones are alright. Seven. Yeah, it's a five. Yeah, seven's for Whitney Houston, because the songs weren't really all that good, but, you know, the voice was undeniably incredible. Uh, six. Seven. A little overrated in this country, but I'd still put it at seven. This is, yeah, this is a five. Typical overproduced 80s crap. Seven. Still seven. She had better singles early on though. And six, I don't really know this song, but yeah. Uh, yeah, six as well. Five, I guess. Seven. Seven as well. Seven. Yeah, because seven, two. Yeah, early card is a bit rough, but I still put this one at a seven. Seven, I guess. Uh, six. Six. Seven. Seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah, the grudging seven, six. Some of these following Kylie singles weren't quite as good. Give this one a six two. This one's a five. This one's an eight just because overwhelming positivity and whatnot. Six, seven, seven, seven. White guilt out of ten. Musically, it's a seven. Probably not Phil Collins' best, so six. Oh no, that's fucking painfully slow now. Nah, I'm gonna Whatever. push it down to five. Don't Seven. <laughs> it's a low six. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> Eight. This is fun. 
Yeah, seven. Seven. Six. A little up to like a prayer apart from the chorus, I feel. Five. Seven, I guess. Begrudging seven. Begrudging six. Yeah, seven. Seven. Four. Five. Fucking get this stars on 45 shit out of here. Fucking three. Oh, six. Seven. With the letter ratings that I've been giving each decade after I've heard all their number one songs, I actually had the ratings for the 70s and the 80s the other way around originally, but I ultimately decided to bump up the 80s a bit higher just because it actually had some really good songs amongst its number one singles, even though it had some yeah. And that is where I'm going to leave part one of my reaction to all of these songs that reached number one in Australia, because I think trying to upload a two and a half hour long video is just going to be too much pain and suffering for my computer to handle, and also as I film this I haven't recorded my reaction to the 2010s and beyond. So I'm going to be putting together a second part of this that will hopefully be thoroughly entertaining despite how long the video is going to be. So yeah, the part two of my reactions to the number one songs in Australian history will be linked about here. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. What? What is this? Two pack featuring Elton John? Possibly as close to a zero out of ten that we're gonna get.